गुड मॉर्निंग मिस
Good morning, students. Sorry for the and um, little bit late. Good morning, sir. Yes. In this session, I am going to uh, take up motion in a plane. Motion in a straight line. It is completed yesterday. In this session, I am going to explain motion in a plane. So there are uh, different types of motions. Here, I am taking. First one is uh, oblique projectile motion, horizontal projectile motion, and the motion of a body on uh, projection on a body on the inclined path. So horizontal projection, oblique projection. First one is oblique projection. When the body is projected at an angle other than 90 degrees with the horizontal. When the body is projected at an angle other than 90 degrees with the horizontal, that uh, projection we say that oblique project projection and that that is called as the project chain a body which is projected at an angle other than 90 degrees with the horizontal is called as the oblique projectile or simply projectile second one is horizontal projection what is meant by horizontal projection whenever the body is uh, moving horizontally or when a body is thrown horizontally with velocity u, when the horizontal velocity becomes zero, body will fall down. This is also parabolic path. So whenever uh, an aircraft is traveling horizontally with a constant velocity u, if a object or if a body is uh, dropped from it, then the path of this one, path of the dropped body is uh, parabolic path. See, this is second one is the horizontal projectile motion. So when the body is, or when the aircraft is moving like this, and uh, whenever it drops a bomb, or whenever it drops a food package, like that, they, that will get the parabolic path. This is called horizontal projectile motion. Third one is uh, projection, projectile motion on an inclined plane on an inclined plane. This is uh, already some inclination is there with the horizontal. When the body is projected at an angle with this, uh, with this, this is a phi and uh, this is angle theta like that. So already with the horizontal certain angle is there. 
so the projection on the inclined plane will say that these are the different types of the projectile motions so in this case during the projectile motion what is a projectile when a body is projected other than 90 degrees with the horizontal let us suppose this is the x axis this is the y axis so when the body is projected at an angle other than 90 degrees with the horizontal with an initial velocity u then uh, this will move in the parabolic path that path is a, the path is called as the parabolic path so at any instant of time the projectile will have two velocities one is along the horizontal direction other one is along the vertical direction. So two velocities it will have at any instant of time. This makes an angle theta with the horizontal. Therefore, U bar is making angle with the horizontal. There will take this horizontal component is taken as Ux. Ux is equal to U cos theta. And a vertical component is taken as Uy is equal to U sin theta. Whenever we resolve this vector u bar into two right angled components, horizontal component is ux and vertical component is ui. So, in the during the projectile motion, uh, in the entire projectile motion, in the entire motion of the projectile, horizontal velocity, horizontal velocity u cos theta that remains the same u cos theta that remains same along the horizontal direction at any instant, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, here, or anywhere, the horizontal velocity of the projectile is constant. In the vertical direction, what happens? It will change the velocity, vertical component of velocity that changes. Gradually that changes and at the highest point, that vertical component of velocity will be zero. And uh, acceleration, it moves with uh, constant acceleration. We'll say that upward direction, it moves with constant acceleration. But whenever that uh, uh, body is considered along the horizontal direction, it moves with uniform velocity. Everywhere, the horizontal velocity is u, u cos theta. That's why acceleration is zero along the horizontal direction. But in the vertical direction, acceleration is nothing but acceleration due to gravity. See the some of the factors in the projectile motion horizontal component of velocity that the horizontal component of velocity is u cos theta and acceleration due to gravity g and mechanical energy they remains constant in the projectile motion horizontal component of velocity u cos theta and acceleration due to gravity g and mechanical energy they will be remains constant and what are the variables speed velocity, vertical component of velocity, u sin theta, momentum, kinetic energy, and potential energy. These will change. In the projectile motion, these physical quantities, they'll change. Uh, velocity and kinetic energy, velocity and kinetic energy are maximum at the point of projection. At the point of projection, velocity will be maximum as well as kinetic energy will be maximum. At the point of projection means at this point. At this point, kinetic energy and uh, velocity, they'll be maximum. Velocity and kinetic energy will be maximum at the point of projection. This is the point of the projection. This is the last point. Next. So whenever we take in the oblique projectile motion, in the oblique projectile motion, uh, we will take that in the oblique projectile motion, we will take that uh, this is a vertical component of velocity. This is the vertical component of velocity. This is the horizontal component of velocity. This vertical component of velocity will say that uh, u sin theta u sin theta, ux is equal to u sin theta, horizontal component of velocity, u cos theta, we will take a body is projected with velocity u bar. Then the greatest vertical displacement of the projectile is called as the maximum height. This is called as the 
maximum height and uh, the horizontal distance covered by the body to reach the same level of the projection same level of the projection is called as the range capital r is for the range the greatest vertical displacement is called as the maximum height okay so then time taken for this whenever it moves like this the time taken to cover a horizontal distance x x is equal to uh, time period t is equal to x divided by u cos theta time taken for the to cover the horizontal distance x this is the horizontal distance covered x x is equal uh, x is to be calculated or time period t is equal to x by u cos theta right displacement it will have um horizontal as well as the vertical motions this is two dimensional motion we'll say that so the vertical displacement of the projectile y is equal to the vertical displacement of the projectile y is equal to x tan theta minus 1 by uh, minus 1 by g into u square cos square theta minus 1 by 2 into uh, sorry minus 1 by 2 into g by u square cos square theta here tan theta is taken as a capital a and uh, g divided by 2 u square cos square theta is taken as capital b then displacement y is equal to ax minus bx square <coughs> we'll take that y is equal ax minus bx square this is displacement ah uh, same ah alle gx square ing bantu gx square how did you get gx square sir this one gx yes. square ah uh, sir oh, that, uh, that full derivation we have to do if you want it for to in uh, puc a total derivation will be there y is equal to um, x tan theta otherwise simply we can substitute that um, i will show you this t is equal to x by u cos theta is there okay i'll show you the derivation so uh, displacement a vertical displacement we have to derive then i'll show it then time period t is equal to um, x by u cos theta we got time period t is equal to x by u cos theta let us suppose this is the equation number 1 for vertical projection uh, whenever the vertical direction it is taken for in the vertical direction in the vertical direction vertical displacement is taken as s is taken as y and acceleration a is taken as minus z mm. initial velocity vertical component of velocity we have take uy is equal to u sin theta these are the factors we have to take from the equations of motion what is that s is equal to ut plus half at square in this we substitute s is equal to y u is nothing but u y u y is equal to u sin theta u sin theta plus 1 by 2 into uh, ut t is also that u sin theta into t u sin theta into t plus 1 by 2 into a means acceleration due to gravity minus g into t square this is the equation y is equal to u sin theta into t minus half g t square this is the equation it, it is taken as equation number 2 in the equation number 2 if i substitute equation number 1 from equations 1 and 2 we will write y is equal to u sin theta into t minus half g t square is there here i have to substitute the value of t y is equal to u sin theta into t means what t is equal to x by u cos theta x divided by u cos theta minus 1 by 2 into i want this Minus one by two into g into t square. 
T square means what? X square by U square cos square theta. X square divided by U square cos square theta. Then Y is equal to here U and U gets cancelled. Then X is there. X into sin theta by cos theta. Sin theta by cos theta. Mm, next uh, this x I'll write right, right side. No, okay. Then uh, 1 by 2 into g divided by u square cos square theta into x square we'll write. This is um, we'll write it as y is equal to sin theta by cos theta will be equal to tan theta. Tan theta into x minus g divided by 2 u square cos square theta is taken as a um, uh, g divided by 2 u square cos square theta into x square. Now tan theta we will write we will write it as a capital A and g by 2 u square cos square theta we will write capital B. It is capital B. Therefore y is equal to ax minus bx square. This is the full derivation we will get in uh, PUC part. Y is equal to AX minus BX square. So this is the displacement, vertical displacement of the projectile. R, this vertical displacement in terms of the range. The vertical displacement in terms of the range. Y is equal to X tan theta into 1 minus X divided by R. Vertical displacement of the projectile in terms of the range. X is called horizontal distance and uh, R is called as the range. The vertical displacement of the projectile, Y is equal to X tan theta into one minus X by R square. It is in terms of the range. It is in terms of this uh, tan theta and uh, U cos theta that we'll take. So different, based on this also problems are there. Next, whenever we take range maximum height to time of light, Maximum height is the greatest vertical displacement of the projected. H maximum is equal to U square sine square theta divided by 2G. So the time of ascent, time taken by the projectile uh, to go up to the maximum height is uh, uh, time of ascent. U sine theta divided by G. Time of ascent uh, TA is equal to U sine theta divided by G u sin theta by g. So time of descent is equal to u sin theta by g. Same, time of ascent and time of descent will be same. Then time of flight, if you take, time of flight is equal to sum of time of ascent and time of descent. 2u sin theta divided by g. Time of flight is equal to u sin theta by g. Then uh, range, range r is equal to u square sin 2 theta divided by g. These are the expression for maximum height to time of light to range. Again, we have the relations between maximum height uh, range, time of light to maximum height. These are the relations uh, we have to take. Then the relations between um, time of light, maximum height and range. Whenever we take the relations between the maximum height and range, r tan theta R tan theta is equal to H. This is the relation between the maximum height and uh, range. R tan theta is equal to H. Otherwise, we when we take that um, relation between the maximum height and uh, time of light, relation between the maximum height and time of light, if you take maximum height, maximum height H is equal to 1 by H. 1 by 8 gt square. Maximum height and time of light relation it is. Maximum height h is equal to 1 by 8 gt square. Then whenever we take the relation between the range and the time of light, between sorry, range and the time of light, then r tan theta is equal to, r tan theta is equal to half gt square. These are the relations between time of light and uh, range. This is the relation between maximum height and uh, range. This is the relation between the maximum height and time of light. 
This is the relation between range and the time of flight. These are the equations. Fine. All these I have typed here. Time of ascent, u sin theta by g. Time of flight, 2u sin theta by g. Maximum height, u square sin square theta divided by 2g. This is whenever the body is projected. Let us suppose a body is projected uh, from the from that uh, uh, this point with velocity u uh, to reach to the point p to reach the point p the time taken is the time of ascent is taken as d1 and to come down to the same level of the projection time period is taken as a t2 time of uh, descent is taken as t2 then what is that height of the point p what is the height of the point p if you want different uh, methods are there so height of the point P, we may write h is equal to u sin theta uh, into t1 minus half g t1 square. This is the formula. One formula to calculate height of the point P from the level of the projection is h is equal to u sin theta into t1 minus half g t1 square. Next. Otherwise, height of the point P is equal to height of the point P, H is equal to half G T1 T2. Half G1, G, half G into T1 T2 also we may write. So small t is we are taking. H is equal to 1 by 2 G into T1 T2. This is a formula to calculate height of the point P. Please mute. One K. Okay, height of the point P from the level of the projection is H is equal to half G T1 T2, right? Uh, whenever we take the relation, um, it's, uh, for the maximum height, uh, sorry, range, for the uh, range whenever we take range R, if the projection angle, R angle of projection theta is equal to 45 degrees, then range will be maximum. Maximum range we, we will get at the angle of projection 45 degrees. Maximum range is equal to u square divided by g. Maximum range r is equal to u square divided by g. Right? Uh, then uh, whenever we project a body at a different uh, angles, let us suppose this is that uh, projection a body is projected from like this uh, at an angle. Let us suppose this angle is 45 degrees. This will be the maximum range. The range will be maximum for the angle of projection 45 degrees. If the projection angle is less than 45 degrees or projection angle is greater than 45 degrees, then range will be less than this. So clearly, I will show one by one. Let us suppose this is that. Let us suppose this is that case when the angular projection is 45 degrees. Angular projection I am taking exactly 45 degrees. This is that U bar. Then range will be maximum. We'll get the maximum range. At 45 degrees, range will be maximum. This is called as maximum range we will get. Similarly, if I take if I take that angle of projection is uh, let us suppose 30 degrees. Angle of projection is taken as 30 degrees. angular projection, let us suppose it is 30 degrees. Then the range will be less than that of maximum range. This is the range. For angular projection 30 degrees, this is the range. So if theta 1 is taken as 30 degrees, then other angle, theta 2 is taken as r minus, sorry, 90 minus theta. Theta 2 is taken as 90 minus theta. 
that is nothing but theta 2 is equal to 90 minus 30. 90 minus 30, this range will be same. Theta for complementary angles, theta 1 and 90 minus theta, theta I am taking it. Instead of theta 1, I'll write theta. Okay. For the complementary angles, theta is equal to 30 degrees and uh, theta 1 is 30 degrees. Okay. Theta 2 is equal to 90 minus theta 1. We'll write it. If the complementary angle theta 1 is equal to theta, uh, or uh, let us suppose, instead of this general equation, if you want, right? Afterwards, I'll come to that example. If the angle of projection, angle of projection theta and uh, 90 minus theta for angles of projections theta and 90 minus theta range will be same same range we will get so for example theta i am taking 30 degrees then 90 minus theta will be watch 90 minus theta we have to take that will be 90 minus theta means what 90 minus 30 it will be 60 degrees for that, these are complementary angles. Theta is uh, 30 degrees and uh, 90 minus theta is 60 degrees. So for the complementary angles, theta 1 is equal to theta and theta 2 is equal to 90 minus theta. For these complementary angles, the range will be same. So this is uh, remaining one is taken as 60 degrees. For the 30 degrees and for degree 60 degrees, range will be same. For the complementary angles, what are the complementary angles? theta and 90 minus theta. Let us suppose theta is equal to 30 degrees, 90 minus theta is equal to 60 degrees. So generalized formula, this is, I am taking theta 1 is equal to 20 degrees. What about that uh, 90 minus theta, then theta 2 is equal to 90 minus, theta 2 is equal to 90 minus theta 1, we have to write. So therefore, that theta 2 is equal to 70 degrees. For the complementary angles, one is uh, 20 degrees, other one is the 70 degrees. Range will be same. For the complementary angles, one is 20 degrees, other one is the other one is the um, 70 degrees. Range will be same. This is uh, 20 degrees, and for other angle taken as uh, 70 degrees for other angle 70 degrees range will be same for complementary angles theta and uh, 90 minus theta range will be same only at the maximum height range will be uh, only at that uh, uh, angle of projection 45 degrees range will be maximum only at 45 range will be maximum fine see all these have to taken for a given value of for a given value of projection of vela, with velocity u range is maximum when theta is equal to 45 degrees range will be maximum when theta is equal to 45 degrees then maximum range formula what is that maximum range formula r maximum is equal to u square divided by g and for the complementary angles theta and 90 minus theta uh, range will be same r uh, 45 plus alpha and 45 minus alpha. For this also, the angles of projections. 45 plus alpha and 45 minus alpha also, range will be same. Clearly, clearly, it is, clearly, it is mentioned that for a given speed of projection u, ranges are same for the complementary angles 90 theta and 90 minus theta or 45 plus alpha and 45 minus alpha. This is regarding the range. Fine. R1 is equal to R2. This is for all. See, range is maximum at 45 degrees. At 45 degrees, range is maximum. And for the complementary angles, what are the complementary angles? One is 20 degrees, 20. Other one is 90 minus 20, means what? 70 degrees. For 20 degrees and 70 degrees, range is the same. And uh, other two angles, one is the 30 degrees. This is the 30 degrees. And other complementary angle, what is that 90 minus 30? 90 minus 30 means 60. For 60 degrees, this is the range. So for the complementary angles, uh, 
20 and 70, range is the same. And for the complementary angles, 30 and uh, 60, range will be same. Only at the angular projection, 45 degrees, range will be maximum. At 45 degrees, range will be maximum. And all other angles, maybe 40, less than 45 or more than 45, range will be less than maximum value. So in the short put, who knows this technique, they can throw that, uh, means the maximum range. They can throw it maximum range. That should, they should hold it at an angle 45 degrees with the horizontal. Next. Velocity of projectile at any instant of time. The magnitude of velocity whenever we take. When the body is projected at an angle theta with the horizontal, after time t seconds, the vertical component of velocity is taken as Vy, horizontal component of velocity is taken as Vx. The resultant velocity is taken as square root of Vx square plus Vy square. The resultant velocity at a time interval t is square root of Vx square plus Vy square. What is that? V square root of Vx square plus Vy square. Then initial means at any instant of time, horizontal component of velocity is same. U cos theta value, it will be same. This is U square. U square will be there. I have printing mistake. This will be U square cos square theta. And uh, y square, Vy square is equal to U sin theta minus GT square. What is the formula? V is equal to U plus AT. This is the formula. U is nothing but Uy. Uy is equal to U sin theta. Uy is equal to U sin theta. Acceleration A is equal to G. And at velocity, V is equal to Vy. This is. So V is equal to Vy. That is equal to U means what? Uy. U means Uy. That will be equal to U sin theta. U sin theta minus A is equal to G. Minus G into T. So Vy is equal to U sin theta into G. So U, uh, Vy square is equal to what? U sin theta minus GT whole square. U sin theta minus GT whole square we will take. This is that velocity, resultant velocity at any instant of time, uh, after time period T. Then velocity vector makes an angle alpha with the horizontal then it is given the velocity vector which makes an angle alpha with the horizontal. Then alpha is equal to tan inverse of Vy by Vx. Alpha is equal to tan inverse of Vy by Vx. Then change in velocity of the projectile during the entire journey. During the entire journey is u sin theta, not it is u cos theta. It is that u sin theta. Change in velocity will be there only in the u sin theta. Along the horizontal direction, it won't be there. Uh, it, it, will, it will be constant. Next, energy of the projectile. At the point of projection, energy will be maximum. That is purely in the form of the kinetic energy. At the point of projection, total energy is equal to half mu square. And uh, at the highest point of projectile, kinetic energy is taken as half mu square cos square theta and uh, total energy, uh, kinetic energy is equal to total energy into cos square theta also we can write. So what is the total energy formula? Half mu square. In the place of half mu square, uh, we may write it as uh, total energy. Total energy. Total energy into cos square theta at the point, at the highest point. The kinetic energy at the highest point is half mu square cos square theta or total energy into cos square theta. And potential energy at the highest point is half m u square sin square theta or total energy into sin square theta. From this, we can write, from this, we can write that potential energy by kinetic energy is equal to tan square theta. Potential energy by tan, uh, kinetic energy is equal to tan square theta. Then, Already, I have explained these uh, relations. Time is the time of flight and the maximum height relation it is. H is equal to half gt square. Sorry, H is equal to 1 by 8 gt square. H is equal to 1 by 8 gt square. 
and relation between the maximum height and the range. R tan theta is equal to 4h, R tan theta is equal to 4h divided by R. Uh, R tan theta is equal to half gt square. Otherwise, 2R tan theta is equal to gt square. These are the relations between um, maximum height, time of light, range and time of light. Um, next. If theta and 90 minus theta are, are complementary angles, then what are that uh, um, ranges will be same. For the complementary angles, theta and 90 minus theta ranges will be same. In such case, maximum heights we have to take that. For the complementary angles, theta 1 is equal to theta and uh, theta 2 is equal to 90 minus theta. For these complementary angles, maximum heights are taken as at uh, angle of projection, theta 1 is equal to theta. Maximum height is taken as h1. At um, angle of projection, theta is equal to 90 minus theta. Maximum height is taken as h2. h1, h2 are the maximum heights. So the shortcut formula is there to calculate uh, uh, this um, range by using the maximum heights at uh, theta and 90 minus theta. So, okay, h1, h2 are the maximum heights. for the complementary angles. Therefore, H1 plus H2 is equal to E square divided by 2G. R, ranges are same. Then the relation between that uh, maximum heights H1 and H2 and the range is, range R is equal to 4 into square root of H1, H2. This is the shortcut formula. Directly they have asked it. What is that range if for the complementary angles H1 and H2 are the maximum heights? Then the expression for the range, R is equal to 4 into square root of H1, H2. If T1, T2 are the time of lights, then uh, R is equal to half G T1, T2, we were right. Range R is equal to half G T square, I wrote. R is equal to half G T square, I wrote. Otherwise, R is equal to half G T1, T2, half G, T1, T2. This is the relation between the range and the time of lights. Next. Uh, whenever we take the range by maximum height, R is equal to 4H cot theta, we may write. Right. Um, if, if, in the, if in the case of the projectile motion, range is n times of the maximum height. If the range is n times of the maximum height, range R is equal to n times of the maximum height. In such case, R is equal to u square sine 2 theta by g, n into u square sine square theta. On simplifying, we will get it. Tan theta is equal to 4 divided by n. On simplifying this, we'll get tan theta is equal to 4 divided by n. Otherwise, theta is equal to tan inverse of 4. Otherwise, uh, it is uh, tan inverse of 4 divided by n. Fine. Uh, next, whenever we take that oblique means uh, horizontal projectile motion, when the body is moving with the horizontal velocity u after uh, and uh, a body is uh, dropped from this point, it, it won't fall down directly. When a body is at the point p, uh, it is moving uh, with the horizontal velocity u, constant horizontal velocity u, and uh, whenever that is there at the point P, which is, at a, which is at a height H from the ground. If it drops the body, it won't fall down. What happens? It will move along the horizontal direction up to some extent. Their horizontal velocity will be zero. From that point, uh, it will fall down. This is called as the parabolic path. In this path, it will fall down. What is the time period for this? When the body that falls directly from the point P to the ground, uh, to the ground by traveling height h, the formula for this is t is equal to square root of 2h divided by g. This is when the body that falls straightly, means what in the straight line? Or when the body is dropped, uh, or when the body is projected horizontally, and uh, after its uh, horizontal velocity becomes zero, it comes to it will fall down on the ground. So in this also, means in this path also, time period will be t is equal to 
square root of 2h divided by g. Time period T is equal to square root of 2h divided by g. Right? Then range they will ask. What is the range? Range r is equal to um, horizontal velocity u bar into time period T, u into T. The range of this uh, case is range r is equal to horizontal velocity into time taken to reach the ground. Once again, I'll repeat. Let us suppose a word, a, an object that is moving with velocity u. From that, uh, or a, an aircraft is moving with velocity u along the horizontal direction at a height, which is at a height h from the ground. Okay, whenever it drops an object from it, the aircraft that drops an object from it, then time taken by the object to reach the ground is t is equal to square root of 2h divided by g. t is equal to square root of 2h divided by g. This is the time taken by the body to reach the ground. Fine. Next, they'll say, let us suppose this is the one building. One building is there. The height of the building is taken as H1. And uh, from first building, they used to throw an object horizontally. They used to throw an object with the velocity U bar horizontally. And uh, it falls on the height. It, uh, it falls on the other building of height H2. It falls on the other building of height H2. Then what is the separation between the what is the separation between the two buildings they lost? So this is the second building of height H2. When an object is thrown uh, from the first building of height H1, it will fall on the second building whose height is taken as H2. Then the time taken for this journey is t is equal to square root of 2 into h1 minus h2 divided by g. It is equal to uh, t is equal to square root of 2 into h1 minus h2 divided by g. If they ask what is the distance between the two billings, if they ask the distance between the two billings, what is the formula? Distance between the two billings is equal to horizontal velocity into time taken to fall on the second building. D is equal to U into T. D is equal to U into T. Like this, we will uh, take that. Now we come to the numericals part. When we come to this numerical part, that's basically, uh, they are asking the numericals by using the maximum height, time of light, range, and the horizontal project, projection. From this only, they are asking the numericals. Mostly plane problems. These are uh, some of the previous case, uh, previous case uh, AAPMT problems I have taken. See, hmm. first problem: a projectile fight with an initial velocity u at some angle theta has a range capital R. If the initial velocity is doubled at the same angle of projection, then the range will be. What is the formula for the range? R is equal to, range R is equal to u square sin 2 theta divided by g. What is given for the same angle of for the same angle of projection, for some angle of projection, theta range is R. If the initial velocity is doubled, same. Uh, a, a projectile fired with velocity U at uh, some angle of projection theta. If the initial velocity V is doubled at the same angle of projection, means theta will be same in both the cases. 
then the range will be we need acceleration due to gravity is constant and uh, theta is also constant so we need the relation between the range and the velocity of the projection r is proportional to u square what is the u1 initial in the first case they are projected with velocity u next case velocity is the two times of the initial velocity in the next case velocity is double dated if the velocity will be if the initial velocity is uh, doubled then we'll write two different cases r is proportional to u square from this we'll write r1 divided by r2 is equal to u1 divided by u2 whole square there r1 is taken as r r2 we have to calculate r1 by r2 is equal to u1 is equal to u u2 is equal to 2u so u by 2u whole square both in numerator and denominator we cancel u then r divided by r2 is equal to 1 by 2 whole square 1 by 2 whole square means what 1 by 4 after cross multiplication we will get r2 is equal to 4r r2 is equal to 4r this is that numerical next if you want you have to take the screenshot uh, yesterday problems uh, i didn't share you i will share today see if the initial velocity of the projectile is doubled keeping the angle of projection same the maximum height reached is first we'll write uh, what is the formula for the maximum height h maximum is equal to u square sin square theta divided by 2g by keeping that uh, velocity of, by keeping that angle of projection is constant then we have to take relation between the maximum height reach if the initial velocity of the projectile is uh, to be doubled if the initial velocity of that one is doubled then the maximum height reached by the projectile will be then u1 is equal to u u2 is equal to 2u then h1 is equal to h maximum 1 h maximum 1 is equal to h h maximum 2 is to be calculated so h maximum 2 is to be calculated instead of that h maximum simply i'll write that h only i'll write h only h1 is equal to h and h2 is how much they have asked h1 is equal to h and what is h2 they have asked now this is the h then h is proportional to u square h is proportional to u square there h1 divided by h2 is equal to u1 divided by u2 whole square in this we'll write that h1 is equal to h then h2 is how much u1 is equal to u u2 is equal to 2u whole square then we'll take that u and u get cancel h divided by h2 is equal to 1 divided by 4 on cross multiplication we'll get that h2 is equal to 4 times of the h it is 4 times of the h next problem in the motion of the projectile freely under gravity it's a uh, uh, what is that uh, what is that physical quantity that remains same in the motion of projectile freely under the gravity it's a total energy that remains constant 
at any instant the total energy that remains constant clearly i have shown you that what are the physical quantities they are variables what are the change uh, what are that uh, constants that we can say okay momentum is not constant energy and momentum both are conserved so only total energy or mechanical energy that remains same that's why total energy that remains the same conserved means what conserved means what remains the same so total energy that remains the same during the projectile motion momentum it is a variable because uh, vertical component of velocity that changes next the range of the projectile for a given initial velocity is maximum for range of the projectile for a given uh, initial velocity is maximum uh, when the angle of projection is 45 degrees okay when the angle of projection is 45 degrees what is that range will be maximum then the range will be minimum if the angle of projection is for a projection angle 45 degrees range is maximum they told fine r is a maximum at uh, angular projection theta is equal to 45 degrees right at which angle what is that minimum where we'll get that minimum range uh, then to get the minimum range what is the angle of the projection they have asked okay for the complementary angle whenever we take that 45 degrees it is there mm, range is 45 for uh, maximum and minimum we have to calculate it so then how to get minimum value r is equal to u square sine 2 theta divided by g where this maximum i mean some range will be maximum at uh, theta is equal to 45 degrees 45 degrees range r is equal to maximum then if the angular projection is uh, theta is equal to 90 degrees theta is equal to 90 degrees or theta is equal to 0 degrees either theta is equal to 90 degrees or theta is equal to 0 degrees range will be minimum okay we'll see that r minimum is equal to u square sine 2 into 90 sine 2 into 90 180 sine 180 divided by g sine 180 will be zero that's why range will be minimum at angle of projection theta is equal to 90 degrees r range will be minimum at the angle of projection range will be minimum at the angle of projection u square sine zero divided by g sine zero also will be zero only sine zero also will be zero so then uh, we will get the minimum range at uh, angle of projections theta is equal to 0 degrees or theta is equal to 90 degrees maybe theta 90 degrees or maybe 0 degrees only one option it is there 90 degrees that's why we'll choose it at angle of projection 90 degrees theta will be minimum next what is given the angle of projection at which the angle of projection at which horizontal range and maximum height of projectile are equal at if range is equal to maximum height they told it the angle of projection at which the horizontal range and maximum heights they are equal they are asked so r is equal to h that should be there then what is the angle at which angle of projection range and maximum height will be same they have asked then uh, whenever uh, we take that r tan theta r tan theta is equal to 4h this is a relation between the range and the maximum height in that uh, given condition range should be equal to maximum height therefore in the place of r if i write h h tan theta is equal to 4h both sides we can cancel uh, h and h what is there tan theta is equal to 4 tan theta is equal to 4 otherwise theta is equal to tan inverse of 4 
or we'll write that uh, theta is equal to theta is equal to tan inverse of 4 otherwise theta is equal to 70 60 degrees theta will be tan inverse of 4 or theta is equal to 70 60 degrees theta is equal to tan inverse of 4 or theta is equal to 70 60 degrees next a ball is thrown a ball is thrown upwards and returns to the ground describing a parabolic path which of the following remains constant so in the entire projectile motion uh, three physical quantities uh, I, I have kept it constant what are they what are they one is horizontal component of velocity second one is the total mechanical energy acceleration due to gravity these are constants so kinetic energy is not constant Kinetic energy is not constant. Speed of the body is not constant. Vertical component of velocity, they are not constant. Clearly. Clearly, I have stressed and explained that. Horizontal component of velocity that remains constant during the projectile motion. Next. At the top of trajectory of projectile, the direction of velocity and accelerations are perpendicular. So at the, this is a important repeated one. At the top of trajectory of projectile, the directions of its velocity and accelerations are perpendicular to one another. Directions of its velocity and accelerations are perpendicular to one another. Acceleration that acts in the downward direction and uh, velocity that acts towards the right. That is, they are perpendicular to one another will take. Next. An object is thrown along, the, along a direction inclined at an angle of 45 degrees with the horizontal direction. The horizontal range of the projectile projection is an object is thrown along a direction inclined at an angle of 45 degrees. So with the horizontal, with the horizontal direction. The horizontal range of the projectile is equals to the horizontal range of the projectile is equals to they have asked. Uh, what is that given condition? Theta is taken as a 45 degrees. Okay. In this, theta angle of projection theta is given as a 45 degrees. Uh, in the horizontal direction, the horizontal range of the projectile that is related to maximum height. The relation I have taken R tan theta, R tan theta is equal to 4H. Okay, R tan theta is equal to 4H. Therefore, R into tan 45, R into tan 45 is equal to 4H r into tan 45 will be equal to 1. r into 45 is equal to 1, that is equal to 4h. Therefore, r is equal to 4h. If the angle of projection is 45 degrees, range will be 4 times of the maximum height. Range will be 4 times of the maximum height. Like this, we will take. Next, the height y and the distance x along the horizontal plane of projectile on a certain planet are given by y is equal to 8t minus 5t square meters and x is equal to 60 meters where t is in seconds. The velocity with which a projectile is projected, the velocity with which a projectile is projected. So here, whenever uh, we want uh, horizontal velocity and uh, vertical velocities, we want after time interval t. Uh, it is given horizontal velocity, horizontal displacement and vertical displacements are given. Horizontal displacement, what is that? Um, horizontal displacement is taken as x. x is equal to 6t. If you want horizontal velocity, we have to differentiate it. So vx is equal to and differentiating this with respect to time, we will get dx divided by dt is equal to d by dt of 6t, d by dt of 60. 
dx by dt, it is the velocity along the x-axis, vx. Vx is equal to uh, 6 into 1. Nothing but 16 to 1 is 6 meters per second. And differentiating uh, x is equal to 6 with uh, 60 with respect to time, we'll get velocity Vx is equal to 6 meters per second. Next. And differentiating this uh, uh, displacement y with respect to time. Displacement uh, y is given as uh, y is given as 8t minus 5t square dy divided by dt is equal to d by dt of 8t minus 5t square. So dy by dt is a vy. Vy is equal to d by dt of 8t minus d by dt of 5t square. There we will get. This will be um, this will be h minus two phi r ten two phi r ten t. What are the values of these velocities along the horizontal and vertical? We got v x is equal to six meters per second. So v y is equal to h minus ten t. The velocity with which uh, body is projected. So I wait and uh, please mute it is disturbance. Uh, sir, you don't mark the answer as soon as as soon as the question appears. I didn't get it. Uh, don't mark means I don't keep that uh, answer yet. I should not keep the answer. Is it? Please say I didn't get it. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, for next class, uh, I'll remove this. Are you? Huh. This is uh, y, Vy is equal to 8 minus 20 meters per second. Then, whenever we want that uh, resultant velocity, what is given that height is uh, uh, y and uh, displacement is y, x, then certain planet. It is given y is equal to 8t minus 5t square and x is equal to 6 meters where t is in seconds. So the velocity with which a project a body is a projected. Hmm? Then uh, we have to take. Uh, we'll take that uh, vy. Vy means what? Vertical component only we have to take. While taking that vertical component, it will be 8 meters per second only. Both 10, 8 minus 10 T, we got it. This is a, a vertical component. So that's why we'll take that uh, Vy is equal to 8 meters per second. Therefore, the resultant velocity after time period T is V is equal to square root of Vx square plus uh, vy square. From this, we will write v is equal to square root of vx means what? 6 whole square. vy is 8 whole square. Therefore, v is equal to square root of 6, 6 or 36. 8, 8 are 64. Therefore, v is equal to 64 plus 36 will be equal to 100. v is equal to square root of 100. v is equal to 10 meters per second. V is equal to 10 meters per second. Next. Uh, this already uh, is written. Huh? Okay. Referring to the above question, the angle with which a horizontal, with the horizontal at which the projectile was projected is, then it takes time. I have to go for X. Again, back to that uh, same question. That means I have to show you that question again. Then uh, it may not reach to you. That's why I have skipped it. Next. 
the range of the particle when launched at an angle of 15 degrees with the horizontal is uh, 15 kilometers, sorry, 1.5 kilometers. Uh, what is the range of the projectile when launched at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal? See, what did they give? When the different angles of projection and uh, ranges they have mentioned, R is equal to U square sine 2 theta divided by G. Here, velocity of projection is constant and acceleration due to gravity is constant. Range is different for different angle of projections. Range R is, R is propor proportional to sine 2 theta. R is proportional to sine 2 theta. They have given when theta 1 is uh, theta 1 is taken as uh, 15 degrees, 15 degrees, range R1 is equal to, R1 is equal to 1.5 kilometers. 1.5 kilometers. So when the angular projection theta 2 is equal to 45 degrees, what is the range they have asked? They have asked the range, right? We can solve this in dif different ways. In detail, we can take the formulas and we can calculate. So or directly, we can take the relation between the range and the uh, angle of projection. That second method I have chosen. R1 divided by R2 is equal to sine 2 into theta 1 divided by sine 2 into theta 2. Range R1 is equal to 1.5 kilometers. 1.5 divided by R2 is equal to sine uh, 2 into theta 1. 2 into theta 1 means what? Sine 15 into 2 will be equal to sine 30 divided by sine 2 into uh, 45 degrees. It will be sine 90. Therefore, we will get. 1.5 1.5 divided by r2 is equal to uh, sin 30 sin 30 1 by 2 divided by sin 90 it is 1 therefore 1.5 divided by r2 is equal to 1 by 2 then after cross multiplication we will get r2 is equal to 1.5 into 2 this is a 3 kilometers there's 1.5 kilometers they gave. That's why answer will be three kilometers. Right, sir. Next problem. A cricketer hits a ball with a velocity of 25 meters per second at 60 degrees above the horizontal. A cricketer hits the ball at a velocity of uh, with a velocity of 25 meters per second at an angle of 60 degrees um, with the horizontal how far above the ground it passes over a field of 50 meters so it is given that uh, a field of 50 meters means horizontal distance it should cover 50 meters and for that how much time it takes to travel so try to understand the problem. This is, uh, if, if I draw the diagram, you are able to understand it. This is a parabolic path we have to choose. It's a parabolic path. In this parabolic path, it has to travel a horizontal distance of 50 meters. It has to pass how far above that ground it pass over the field of 50 meters. This is how much time it takes to cover horizontal distance of 50 meters. This has to cover 50 meters. Then for that, what they are asking, how much time it takes they are asking. They have asked it how much time it takes. Then horizontal uh, velocity horizontal velocity horizontal component of velocity uh, we have to know and it is projected at an angle of uh, 60 degrees with initial velocity u is equal to 25 meters per second 
this u is uh, 25 meters per second u is equal to 25 meters per second then they ask it what is the time taken to cover this uh, uh, to come from this to cover this horizontal distance this is to go like this from here to there to go like this how much time it takes they have asked it right then horizontal velocity whenever you take vx is equal to uh, u sin theta vx is equal to u sin theta or ux is equal to u sin theta we may take this is ux is equal to u sin theta this is ux is equal to u is what 25 it is given u is equal to 25 meters per second then uh, what is that uh, theta theta is equal to 60 degrees it is provided from this uh, ux is equal to 25 into sin 60 sin 60 root 3 divided by 2 so ux is equal to 25 into square root of 3 by 2 this will be 12.5 12.5 into square root of 3 2 that cancel in 25 how many times 12.5 times therefore ux is equal to 12.5 root 3 12.5 root 3 meters per second then we have to calculate time period so this distance covered is taken as s is equal to or d is equal to. instead of s we'll write distance d is equal to 50 meters what is the formula for velocity velocity uh, or distance uh, speed is equal to distance divided by time then time period t is equal to time period t is equal to distance divided by velocity so this velocity what we have take ux then time period t is equal to distance it is taken as 50 meters divided by ux is equal to 12.5 square root of 3 12.5 into square root of 3 12.5 that cancel in 50 how many times four times it will get cancel p is equal to 4 divided by square root of 3 4 divided by square root of 3 8.2 we got it eh yeah. uh, then how far above the ground it passes over a field of 50 meters mm, again uh, they have asked to calculate what is the vertical displacement the time taken is uh, from here to there time period is t uh, t is equal to 4 divided by square root of 3 uh, no 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 it is moving with uniform sorry it is moving with uh, uniform velocity along the horizontal direction it is moving with uniform velocity so while we are taking time period this is not the formula why it is moving with uniform velocity it is moving with uniform velocity that's why time period if you want to calculate it is horizontal component of velocity is given horizontal horizontal velocity is given as uh, 25 meters per second it is constant throughout its journey the it is constant what we got that horizontal velocity it is uh, right uh, first uh, we will take that horizontal velocity vx vx is constant throughout its journey as we want to calculate that height covered we will calculate vertical component of velocity we will calculate then um, vertical component of velocity after time period t is vx uh, vy is equal to sorry vertical component of velocity at the point of projection vy vy or uy vy is equal to u sin theta U, uh, ux if you take it is u cos theta I, i i have taken wrong so vy is equal to u sin theta i have to take it is a vertical component of velocity then uh, vy is equal to u is how much 
u is equal to 25 meters per second. And uh, sin theta is uh, sin 60 we have to take. Theta is given as 60 degrees. Therefore, vertical component of velocity is uh, 25 into sin 60 square root of 3 by 2. This is vertical component of velocity. It is uh, Vy. Vy is equal to 12.5 square root of 3 meters per second. Then whenever you want to calculate the time period uh, to move from this point to this point, how much time it takes take time period if you want to calculate the time period, time period T is equal to with this velocity, with constant velocity, it will move. At any point here, 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 everywhere, it moves with a constant velocity. That's why uh, uh, that's why we have to take that time taken. Time taken to uh, move from this point to this point, we have to take that time taken to uh, move a distance. This is the vertical component of velocity. And uh, whenever we take that horizontal component of velocity also, horizontal component of velocity, first I'll, if I calculate, Vx is equal to u cos theta. Vx is equal to u cos theta. Then uh, Vx is equal to u is given as 25 and the theta is given. What is the theta? 60 degrees, cos 60 it is. 60. Therefore, Vx is equal to 25 into cos 60, 1 by 2, right? 1 by 2. So this will get cancelled 12.5 times. Therefore, Vx is equal to 12.5 meters per second. Horizontal velocity, we got it, and the vertical velocity, we got it. Horizontal component of velocity, Vx is equal to 12.5 meters per second. Vertical component of velocity, 12.5 square root of 3 meters per second. Then we have to calculate how much time it takes to come from this point O to P. Time taken to come from the point O to B, O to P. If you want, time taken to come to the point from O to P, it will be equal to T is equal to, T is equal to um, distance D divided by horizontal component of velocity. So T, D is given as 50 meters divided by horizontal velocity, it is 12.5 uh, meters per second. This 12.5 meters per second gets canceled in 54 times. So therefore time period T is equal to four seconds. Then they have asked it, what is the vertical displacement? Therefore, the vertical displacement covered The vertical displacement covered if you want then y is equal to that y is equal to uh, actual formula s is equal to ut plus half at square as it is for the vertical projection y is equal to u y t minus half g t square u y t minus half g t square the vertical distance covered is y is equal to u y is equal to 12.5 into square root of 3 12.5 into 12.5 into square root of 3 into time period 4 seconds minus 1 by 2 into g is taken as uh, uh, will take 9.8 meters per second square time period t is equal to 4 4 whole square right then y is equal to 12 into 4, it will 12.5 into 4 will be equal to 50. 50 root 3. Then uh, 2 get cancelled in 4.9.8, uh, 4.9 times. 50 root 3 minus uh, 4.9 into 4 fours are 16. 4 fours are 16. Then uh, 50 into 50 into 1.732 minus uh, 4. 16 into 4.9. We have to multiply 16 into 4.9. And multiplying 16 and 
16 into 4.9 if you do 78.4 it will be 78.4 what is that 50 into 1.732 and multiplying with 50 into 1.732, we will get 86.6. So y is equal to 86.6 minus 78.4. 86.6, 86 minus 78.8 will be 86.6 minus 78.4 it is uh, equals to 8.2 8 8.2 meters so the vertical distance covered is taken as 8.2 meters this is the numerical only one problem we'll solve and uh, uh, we'll see we'll check that we'll go for other problem and afterwards if the time is there we'll go for another problem Next, a stone is projected from the ground with velocity of 20 meter, 25 meters per second. Two seconds later, it just clears a wall of 5 meters height. The angle of projection of the stone is. This is a little bit uh, a different problem than we have seen earlier. So this is given a stone is projected from the ground with velocity of 25 meters per second. Velocity of the projection is given. Velocity of the projection is 25 meters per second. Then U is equal to 25 meters per second. Two seconds later, time period they have mentioned. Time period T is equal to two seconds. Two seconds later, it crosses or it clears a wall of height 5 meters. Means what vertical displacement it has covered is 5 meters. Then they have asked you to calculate angle of the projection. What is the angle of the projection that we have to calculate? Then uh, for vertical projection, we have to take vertical component of velocity. Vy is equal to u sine theta is to be calculated. Therefore, Vy is equal to u is given as 25 into angle of projection that we have to calculate. Uh, 25 sin theta, Vy is equal to 25 sin theta. Then the formula to calculate vertical displacement, Y is equal to U sin theta into T minus half GT square. Here we will take Y is taken as 5, U is given as 25 uh, and uh, sin theta into time period two seconds minus one by two into g value we we may take 9.8 or 10 i am taking 10 for simplification 10 into t square t square means what two whole square here two get cancelled in 10 five times uh, two into 25 will be equal to 50 left side we got uh, five five is equal two into 25 it will be 50 50 sine theta minus 5 into 2 2 are 4. Therefore, 5 is equal to 50 sine theta minus 5 4 are 20. If you bring this minus 20 to left side, 50 sine theta, 50 sine theta is equal to 20 plus 5 25. 25. Uh, this 25 that cancel, otherwise sine theta is equal to 25 divided by 50. This will be equal to 1 by 2. Therefore, sine theta is equal to 1 by 2 and uh, theta is equal to sine inverse of theta is equal to sine inverse of 1 by 2. That is theta is equal to 30 degrees. This 1 by 2, we may write uh, sine 30. Sine inverse and sine get cancelled, 30 will be there. So that uh, answer is 30 degrees. I'll check that. If a small problem is there, uh, we can solve it. Okay, right. 
it is that easy problem only a projectile thrown with a speed v at an angle theta which has the range r on the surface of the earth for the same speed v angle of projection theta its range will be on the moon so acceleration due to gravity on the earth is taken as g and acceleration due to gravity on the moon is 1 by 6th of acceleration due to gravity on the moon is 1 by 6th of the acceleration due to gravity on the earth 1 by 6th of the acceleration due to gravity on the earth so that will write g acceleration due to gravity on the moon is equal to g by 6 then we need relation between the acceleration due to gravity and the range range r is equal to u square sin 2 theta divided by g then r is inversely proportional to g range we have to calculate uh, range on the moon is to be calculated range on the moon divided by range on the earth range on the earth is taken as r what is the range on the moon they have asked range on that is a g g at divided by g moon we will take right sir in this if i substitute range on the moon is to be calculated r moon divided by range on the earth is equal to acceleration due to gravity on the earth is g acceleration due to gravity on the moon is g divided by 6 okay g and g gets cancel g and g get cancel it comes to numerator therefore range on the moon divided by range on the earth is equal to 6 okay then uh, range on the moon is equal to 6 times the range on the earth r moon is equal to 6 star because r moon is taken as r only so 6r is the correct answer okay i am going to stop the class here we'll see that uh, uh, remaining in the next session thank you i am going to stop the class here sir one nimsha i say sir could you have yesterday's recording classes recording class i don't have uh, if you want uh, i will share that uh, these notes notes i can share you and if you want the solutions i have to write and send you i cannot type to type it takes much time i will write uh, uh, on a sheet and i can share you 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 need actually what is the problem and its solution that's all yes sir uh, then recording if i want to keep uh, it it may it may take more time i have to wait more time for that uh, after complete um, complete in the class and anyhow they are recording right we'll see that Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.